Right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box, which kind of matches my shirt. Put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Sony 135F 1.8 G Master Lens. Now this is a $1,900 prime lens. Now a lot of people have said that Sony doesn't have the best prime lenses. Well, they honestly haven't had a lot of prime lenses, but they've been adding a lot more G Master lenses as the years and months keep progressing. This is a nice option, 135 1.8. It's a Little bit of a telephoto lens. Maybe it's a little long for a lot of different portraits because you need a lot of space, but it is a good portrait lens. But what I don't want you to forget is the fact that prime lenses, like a 135, just because it's great for portraits doesn't mean you can't use it for anything else. It will work in any situation that you find yourself in where you have time and space to work with prime lenses. Now, I just said it's 1900 bucks. Now, there is a competitor. You have a Sigma 135 1.8. Now, that Sigma comes in at 1400 bucks. Bucks. Now we're not going to do a comparison in this particular review, but we do have a future review coming out, and if it's out already, it will be linked down below, where we put those two lenses head to head while shooting portraits to help you decide which one is the one you should go with. The Sony, which is more expensive, or the Sigma, which is a little less expensive. So stay tuned for that one in the future. Now let's look at the physical attributions of this lens. When you pick it up, you're like, it's kind of heavy at 2.1 pounds, but because I work out, it really feels a lot less than 2.1 pounds. It's really not a bad feeling lens in the hands. To be honest, the Sigma is actually a little heavier than this one, and you can noticeably feel the difference. But this is a nice feeling lens. Comes with a lens hood right here. What I like about the lens hood is that it has this nice rubber thing around the outside and in the inside it's like a velour. It's soft, kind of like my insides and my heart. I have a, I have a soft heart for things. I'm not always abrasive, but when I am, just remember, I'm soft inside. Just like the softness of this lens hood. Yeah, anyway, we've got an 82 millimeter filter thread. This is an 82 millimeter lens cap. So if you're gonna put any filters on the outside of this, with which by the way, I haven't said it for a long time, if you put crappy filters, just daylight filters, you know, the see-through ones on the ends of this lens, make sure you buy the best of the best with honors, sir, because you don't wanna have a great piece of glass ruined by putting a crappy piece of glass in a filter on the outside of this lens. Honestly, I don't recommend putting filters on the outside of any of your lenses, daylight filters, you know, the see-through ones. I don't recommend it. And people are like, well, but what about dust and scratches? Well, one, don't scratch your lens. Don't drop your lens, knock on some wood. Don't, don't do any of that stuff. And clean your lens when you need to clean it. Don't be afraid to use it. That's why you have insurance, generally speaking, hopefully through My Gear Vault, mygearvault.com. Download it for free for iOS and Android. But anyway, back to how this lens feels. This is how big it is. It, it really isn't that big of a lens, which is nice. Now let's look at some of the other physical attributions. You have a nice, smooth feeling, manual focus lens. It's like, I, I can manual focus ring. I could just keep spinning it. You think anything will ever happen? No, it's all digital what's going on in there. It's not like you have wires and then it stops and then you have to go back the other way. You have these two programmable buttons right here. There's a lot of different things you can do inside the camera where when you press this button, it could activate whatever feature or function that you turn on. Now you may notice that there is this aperture ring, you know, for people that wanna, for whatever reason, turn the aperture on the lens. I, I haven't figured this one out. I, I, I get some people like changing apertures. Maybe with this smooth declicked aperture, which is set right now, that could be good if you're shooting video. Or you could just leave it on A and just turn your 
finger to change the aperture inside the camera or use the app to do the exact same thing. But if you think there's a use for this ring still to be here, please leave a comment down below to help educate me on why this is important and a good function that you would like to see. Now, I already said that it was de-clicked, but right here it says click. Click is off currently. That's why it's smooth as you rotate it. And now click is on, which means, oh, you hear that? Yeah, I'm clicking apertures. I just went from 1.8 to 22. Hmm. Okay, carrying on. On this side, we got full and limit as it comes to your autofocus. You have AF and then manual, and then that basically is the outside of the lens. Now, we did do different tests with this lens. I did portraits here at the factory where we put this lens on the Sony A7R 3 I shot a lot of images at f1.8, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, using IAF. Now, at the time that we did the tests, the new firmware 3.0 was not out for this camera, but it still did use IAF, and we are going to see the results in just a minute. I also took it into the real world to photograph people at a gym working out because remember, lenses can be used for anything. Would you like to take better pictures in only 11 days? Well, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com 11 days. Now let's get back to the video. The images that I want to start with were taken over at a gym where I work out on occasion, and I used the Sony A9 with the 135 1.8, really using IAF because we know that I love IAF. So let's take a look at the first image. We're at 1 1,000th of a second at F1.8 ISO 320. Just love the colors, love the tones that we're pulling out of this camera and off of this lens, and love how sharp the eye is. The fact that the IAF finds the eye exactly where I want it to be, oh man, it makes shooting so much nicer. This is a sample portrait because what was actually cool at this place is you've got one wall of windows over there and then one wall of windows, long wall of windows that covers the entire gym area. So it fills that area with really nice soft light. So that's why I was able to get this nice portrait right here, right on the eye, super duper sharp. Uh, some of you may be saying, well, why'd you shoot at 1.8 the whole time? I wouldn't shoot at 1.8, why'd you do it? Well, I wanted to see how well I could do at 1.8 for two reasons. How good's this lens at 1.8, how sharp is it? And two, how does IAF handle at 1.8? Does it nail the eyelashes? Does it do the eyebrow? Or can it nail the eye time and time again at many different distances from full bodies to super tight headshots? And so far, well, I can't say so far because I've already done it, it nailed it time and time and time again. So a combination of the cameras as well as the software that's in the cameras in combination with this lens does a really nice job. This is a guy who's pushing the sled, shot at 1 1600th of a second at F1.8, 500 ISO. I do understand that in the world of uh, exposure, I could have cut my exposure down, my ISO down, which would have dropped my shutter speed, but 500 ISO, any camera's capable of doing it. I want that faster shutter speed so that it can't be motion blur caused by me because there is no IS in this lens, but do you really need it because you have image stabilization in the bodies? Just showing you that it nailed the eye again. Loved it. Great shot right there. This is Amanda, she works out, as you can tell. Love the tones, the contrast, and from a distance, you can see what 1.8 looks like when you fill the frame with the body. I filled the frame here, love the color, as I just said, and you can see that you can still blow the background out even from a distance, because that's what 1.8 lets you do. This was more of a test to see how the camera and lens handled in extreme backlight. Yeah, it's black and white because I just thought it felt better, but the backlight was fine. It auto-focused, it still found his eye, uh, and didn't have any issues whatsoever with that shot. Now, this is interesting. This is a, a prime example of how fast this lens is. This is going on during the kettlebell swings. Now, kettlebell swings, you literally go down low and swing up high, which means if I'm focused on just getting this shot, similar to what you see here, I'm focused on the eye, 
but I'm not, I don't have time to move the focus points around because it's happening so fast. So they leave the frame, then they come back into the frame, and the IAF nailed it. The lens motors, the linear motors that are in them, super fast at acquiring the, the autofocus. This would be extremely difficult to do with any other DSLR or mirrorless camera for that matter that doesn't have functioning IAF. And when I say functioning, I don't count the fact that most other camera companies have IAF as functioning. They are more like low functioning IAF. That's what I would call them, low functioning. But check it out. Time and time again, nailed the eye. It found it. That It doesn't get any better than that when you're shooting action. And then one final one right there did the same thing. It nailed it on the eye. So I can't tell you how much I love the combination of IAF and how fast this lens autofocuses. Now, let's transition to a place where the speed of the autofocus doesn't really matter as much to the portrait session where I had a model by the name of Taylor who's also a photographer. She sat in for us. Now, let me paint the picture of the background. We set up Christmas tree lights. We used them from the Photo News Fix set. We also brought down the Tetris lights. The colors of the Tetris lights can look really cool in the background. We wanted to have the bokeh in the background. We wanted to shoot at 1.8. Don't forget, I also did go from 1.8 all the way through to eight so that you could see the difference that the aperture has on the bokeh on the same exact image. We also tested out a couple of shots of the brick wall just to see a brick wall test to see what the vignetting actually looks like. And after 2.8, the vignetting is basically gone. So I should remind you that any photos that I'm talking about or some of the photos, you'll be able to download them as raw files so that you can pixel peep to see whether or not you like the images or you don't, they are linked down below. Let's take a look at the first sample photo. This was taken at 1 80th of a second at 1 8 ISO 100. Uh, some of you may say, Jared, it's a 135 millimeter lens. Why are we at 1 80th of a second? And I could be all like, well, because I know that the image stabilization of this camera is pretty good. That's not the case. I set it to what the proper exposure looked like to be at the base ISO of 100, not even thinking that I should make sure that the shutter speed was a little faster because I was more focused on giving you guys the cleanest images possible to download. Luckily, they all worked perfectly fine because the image stabilization and my stability being able to hold things pretty damn still, even at 1.8 and the IAF, nailed it. Prime example, let's zoom in on her eye right here. Could you tell me how sharp that, excuse me, are you sharp? Yes, I'm very sharp. The eyes just told me how sharp they are. Look at the tones and the colors. Look at the bokeh in the background. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, look at the bokeh, it looks like a football because it actually looks like a lemon, because that's what it looks like to me. I, it's bokeh. Could everybody give it a rest right now where they think like, it has bad bokeh, it has good bokeh. It's a $1,900 lens. It's not gonna have crappy bokeh. And stop worrying about stuff like that. The bokeh looks fine. It's bokeh, like anybody, is there like a bokeh test? Like, this is good bokeh? This is bad bokeh. At the end of the day, it's meant to be out of focus. They're all very similar when you're in the pro level lenses. Sure, the crappier glass has maybe not as good looking bokeh sometimes, but most of the world doesn't know much of the difference. So anyway, you can download these files and look for yourself. They were so sharp and so crispy straight out of the camera that I ended up pulling back slightly on the clarity slider because they didn't need to be as sharp on the face, but the eyes retain the sharpness. Moving on to the next picture, I wanted to get closer and fill the frame to get a basically a nice tight headshot. Beautiful portrait. I just, I, I just love working with IAF because generally speaking, when I'm shooting at F1.4 or something with my Nikon uh, D5 with a 105.14, I find it hard to nail the eye time and time again. And I'm in continuous focus. I try it in single focus where I'm constantly beeping and locking on. Here, I'm in continuous focus with the Sony and I'm holding down the button for IAF where if you have firmware 3.0, you just hold down your shutter button and it's going to lock in and find the eye every single time. It's incredible. 
Great combination. I can't tell you how much I love this combination, but I love this portrait. Super sharp on the eye at 1.8, and I just think it really looks good. Continuing on, I actually moved a little bit to my left so that I could get over her right shoulder a different set of bokeh, so a di different set of bokeh balls so that you could have a couple of different distances to play with. Because when we set up these backgrounds, we have closer lights in the background and further lights just so that it could give you guys different tests but oh my God, that is so darn sharp. Sharp, colorful, love the tones, again, that we're pulling out of this camera and off this lens. Now, this one, I had to leave the room. I had to leave the room to fill the frame to get this shot at 135. So if you have a small studio, it may not be the right lens for you if you're looking to get a full length portrait. I love this for full length portraits. If I had enough space, which I do here at the factory, I stepped out of the room. You can see the carpet down below. You can see the distance we are from the different lights. And you can see still, still at 1.8, the background is blown out. So we've separated the subject from the background. That's the isolation that you get when you can shoot at 1.8. And again, relying on the camera's IAF to not miss, I, you very rarely miss with this system. Next, I came back into the room but didn't get as close as I did with some of the portraits and wasn't terribly too far away, but just wanted to give you a different distance. I mean, look at the colored bokeh of the Tetris light in the background. You can actually see it's a good Tetris. I love Tetris, Tetris is so good. Mixed in with some of the tree, you can see the tree a little bit in focus, but again, the tones and the colors and the eyes are super sharp. I've said it time and time again, so I, I don't really need to harp on it. And then close up test. How close, what is the close focus? How close could I get to her eye and still be in focus? This is where I ran into issues with IAF. As I got closer, IAF doesn't work. So I just moved the focusing point, the gray one, because it doesn't light up in the Sony's, to her eyeball and just went click, click, click. Nailed it, look how sharp that is. It's like the ocean. Her eye is like an ocean and it also picks up the catch lights. This isn't meant to be a great portrait. It's just meant to show you what close focus looks like. So that's how close I could get to her to get this photo. And for another test, we pulled out the Atomos, plugged it into the camera so that you could see the focusing. How fast is it focusing on Taylor, then the background, then back to Taylor, then to the background, then to Taylor, then the background. It's fast. This lens is really fast. Do you shoot RAW and would you like to save yourself time on editing your RAW files or would you like a really good starting point? Well, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can find at fronosphoto.com slash presets where you can play with the sliders, move them back and forth to see the befores and afters. And for a limited time, they are 40% off. So go ahead and take advantage of that sale. Now let's jump back into the review. Now, before I tell you who it's for, let's get to the two most important tests in the photography world, starting with the sniff test. Oh yeah. Oh, I know what that is. You know when you're on the playground in the 1980s as a kid because you fell off the jungle gym and there was those wood chips stuck in your arm? It smells like those wood chips because they were so sharp that they got stuck in my elbows and then I cried all the way home. And then now it's time for the wind tunnel test. Super important. For this, I'm putting on the lens hood because that needs to be there. It didn't even move. You know it's good when it doesn't move. What a lens. So good, so good. So who's it for? Look, if you're gonna shoot video, Maybe if you're locked off doing portraits, it's gonna be good for video. It's gonna be a good video lens. Just keep in mind, it's a 135. It's super long, so you just need to work with it. It's not I'm not saying that it's not gonna work, but it will work very well if you decide for the right situation to use it. Are you a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer? Are you into travel? Do you just want an awesome prime lens because you have time to shoot photos with a prime lens and get your composition right? This is a lens for a professional. If you already have the Hebrew Trinity line of lenses and you wanna pick up another prime lens or a prime lens for portraits and all of those things I just said, this should be in your bag. If I was a Sony shooter, this would be on my shelf and then a lot of times 
in my bag as well. Now in terms of portraits and pictures and real world shooting for action, I loved it. It is sharp. It is, feels good in the hands. It focuses extremely well on the A9, on the A7R3, and it's gonna focus extremely well on the A7 III as well. That's a lot of as wells, but this is a fantastic lens. So if you would like to pick up this lens or any other camera gear for that matter, go to adorama.com slash fro, because when you shop there, it helps us to continue to make these free videos. So to wrap this up, you can download the raw files. They are linked down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think, because I kind of want to hear what you have to say about this lens. And that is it. Jared Poland Fronos Photo.com. See ya. Yeah.